Welcome, or welcome back, to the Ty Said What Ty Said channel. We are back to old school gossip today, and we're going to get into the marriages, affairs, and children born in and out of wedlock to Jermaine Jackson. Grab a snack, because he's been a busy man. Before I get started, I just want to give a quick shout out to Michelle Baker for letting me know that she's a new subscriber to the channel on my video called Jermaine Jackson Married, Randy Jackson's Baby Mama, and Had Two Kids With Her. Mm-hmm. And I also want to send a quick shout out to another commenter on that same video, Michael Edmond. Thank you for your kind words. He basically said that I have a voice for this kind of content. How encouraging. Now, on to why you are here. Let's talk about the original nasty boy, Jermaine Jackson, and his marriages, affairs, children born to wives, and children born to baby mamas. Jermaine Jackson's first wife was Hazel Gordy. She's the daughter of the founder of Motown Records, Barry Gordy. They got married on December 15, 1973, and divorced in 1988. Remember these years because you're about to hear some overlapping with relationships and even with children being born. With Hazel, Jermaine had a son, Jermaine Jackson Jr., born in January of 1977. Then the following year, Jermaine and Hazel had a daughter together, Autumn Jackson, born in July of 1978. Then on March 6, 1984, he had another daughter, Don Jackson. But guess what? His wife, Hazel, didn't have another child until 1987. So this is the first time that he allegedly cheated on his wife. If the story is true, the mother of the child was never revealed to the general public. But apparently Hazel knew and decided to stay with Jermaine anyway. Then three years later, Hazel had the last child she would give him, Jamie Jermaine Jackson, born in March of 1987. She took him back after he had the child that she knew about with another woman. But didn't I just say that she had her last child with him in 1987? Well, in 1986, Jermaine had another child with yet another woman. Jeremy Maldonado Jackson was born just two and a half months before Jermaine's last child with Hazel Gordy, born in December of 1986 and born to another affair, Margaret Maldonado. Yes, Margaret Maldonado was his mistress at that time. And while Hazel was busy working on divorcing Jermaine Jackson, Jermaine was busy working on his second child with his mistress and Margaret Maldonado gave birth to her second son with Jermaine, Jordan Michael Jackson, in January of 1989. When Hazel Gordy finally kicked him out by means of divorce, Jermaine took his baby mama, Margaret, back to the Jackson family home in Havenhurst to lay up with her there until he kicked her to the curb in 1994. He never married Margaret Maldonado. But according to Margaret, they had quite the shacking up experience. Maldonado wrote a book called Jackson Family Values. In it, she claims that when she got with Jermaine, she had no clue that he was married. And I'm sorry y'all, but I just find that really hard to believe. Jermaine Jackson and Hazel Gordy got married before I was born. So I can't say for sure. But it just seems like if you were a fan of Jermaine Jackson, one of the biggest names of the 70s, the fact that he married Barry Gordy's daughter would have been a hard thing to not be able to find out or know about him. She must have been on some very strong stuff. And I'm saying that because when Jermaine Jackson met Margaret, she was just coming out of rehab for drug addiction and working at a restaurant. Now you tell me how you go from Hazel Gordy, daughter of a multimillionaire, to a dope fiend restaurant worker. 
But anyway, on the day they met, he asked her if she wanted to be in his music video in Jamaica, and that was all that she needed to hear to hop on the Jermaine Jackson Jerry Curl train. In her book, she says that when she found out that Jermaine had a wife at home, I guess the home that she had not been able to visit the whole time they had been dating, he told her that he was going to file for a divorce from his wife and that he was excited about Margaret's pregnancy. Margaret finally figured out that he was probably lying when she went into labor on Christmas Day and she was in the hospital alone while Jermaine was at home with his wife and children he had with said wife. Margaret ended up having to call Jermaine on the phone to tell him about their new bundle of joy. One thing that Daddy Jermaine did do for his new baby mama was put her and their son up in a condo in the Pacific Palisades near the home that he shared with his wife, Hazel. But he was still married and not a second closer to getting that divorce that he promised Margaret. As a matter of fact, not only was he still married, but he was still sexually active with his wife. The proof hit Margaret in the face when she saw media photos of a pregnant Hazel Gordy Jackson taking care of Jermaine's other love child. Now, isn't it funny how Margaret saw that picture, but she never saw any pictures of Jermaine and Hazel's wedding? Things that make you go, hmm. And according to Margaret, Jermaine would bring her son around the Jackson family, but continued to hide her away from them. She also said that apparently Jermaine's plan was to make his wife, Hazel, believe that Margaret walked away from him and their baby. So Hazel was going to raise the baby while making Margaret believe that Jermaine and Hazel were living separate lives and about to divorce. Just lies all around. So how did wife and baby mama finally have a conversation? Well, after allowing Jermaine to take the baby to a softball game, Margaret became worried after it was getting late. So frustrated, she called Jermaine's house and Hazel picked up. Tired of everything now herself, Hazel revealed that she in fact had the baby the entire time. Jermaine had lied to his wife and mistress once again. In order to have the baby at his home, Jermaine lied to Hazel and told her that Margaret didn't want the baby. But when talking to Margaret, he convinced her that his other children liked having their younger sibling around. Hazel finally got her divorce from her lying, cheating, side baby-making husband. Some sources say that it was finalized in 1987 and others say 1988. Either way, Margaret had her second child with the curly one in 1989, then their affair ended in 1994. Oddly enough, after Jermaine was done with Margaret, Margaret and Hazel became good friends, and they spent the next year analyzing Jermaine's relationship with his new wife, Alejandra Genevieve Oaziaza. But just a second, before we move on to Alejandra, let's talk about one more possible mistress of Germain. And I say possible because Germain has, for the most part, but not completely, denied it. Yet others around him have confirmed it. There is no known child from the relationship, but a music video certainly alludes to it. But the possible mistress can't speak for herself because she is now deceased. So I'm going to ask you, do you think that Jermaine Jackson and Whitney Houston had an affair? If the stories are true, the affair would have happened in 1984, making Whitney Houston Jermaine's second mistress, bumping Margaret to his third. Whitney's number one hit, Saving All My Love For You, 
echoed the story of her secret affair with Jermaine Jackson. The blockbuster ballad is about a woman having a romance with a married man, as Jermaine Jackson was at the time, and waiting for him to be hers. Whitney even hired a Jermaine look-alike, great value Jermaine Jackson, for the song's video, and he's playing the role of her producer, as Jermaine was in real life her producer. It features his wife keeping a strong side eye on his mistress. According to The Sun UK, Michael Jackson was among the few people who knew about the pair's year-long passionate relationship, but did not approve of it. Jermaine was brought in to produce for Whitney and duet with her before her career really took off in the early 1980s. Romance blossomed even though Jermaine was married to Hazel Gordy, again, the daughter of Motown founder Barry Gordy. Jermaine hinted at the relationship in his book, You Are Not Alone, Michael Through a Brother's Eyes. But he claimed that they quelled their feelings for each other before becoming lovers. Revealing how he was torn between his wife and Whitney, he wrote, Whitney and I spoke about our shared predicament. And as much as I wanted to lose myself in all those feelings, I told her to wait. I spoke of one day and maybe. Ultimately, we had to go our separate ways and it killed us both. But some anonymous friend of Jermaine Jackson who spoke to the son revealed Jermaine was being less than honest because he did not want to reveal the truth out of respect to Whitney while she was alive. This friend said, quote, Jermaine didn't even tell half the story in his book. He made it sound like they flirted and backed away, but they were lovers. In those early days with Whitney, he was smuggled into her hotel rooms, they worked extra late in the studio, and she even had a code name for him. She referred to him as G. The reason it ended was because Jermaine wouldn't leave his wife and Whitney was angry. The video for saving all my love for you was all about that. So that's everything that his friend had to say. Now, the symbolism of the words sung by Whitney and the video made it a powerful dedication to their romance if their romance really took place. Jermaine admitted in his book that being around Whitney as they recorded songs together in Los Angeles was, quote, intoxicating. He wrote, with each session, that intense professional chemistry crossed over. These were turning into duets between temptation and forbidden love, and the studio sessions gave us what felt like stolen time together. Jermaine also claimed that Michael Jackson warned him off of a full-on sexual relationship. He said, he didn't fuel the temptation as some guys would. He reminded me about Hazel, about family. He gave the soundest advice, and I knew that doing the right thing was what I had to do. But most people think that in reality, Jermaine ignored his brother and went ahead with the fling. I mean, let's be honest, that wouldn't be completely out of character for him to cheat, now would it? But I will say that I believe that if he cheated, he knew that it was in his best interest to never let it be known because it would be the end of his music career. When your father-in-law's connections in the music industry are what's keeping you working, there are probably some lines that you just don't cross with his daughter or in the business. According to the New York Post, during the affair, Whitney Houston, then single and 22 years old, and Jermaine Jackson, 30, and of course married to Hazel Gordy, would double date with Jermaine's brother, Jackie, and Jackie's then girlfriend, Paula Abdul. But apparently other than that, no one else knew about their relationship. They pretty much kept it quiet. Now that was some more information from yet another one of these anonymous friends of Jermaine Jackson. One of Jermaine's other friends told the Post how concerned Jermaine was in 2001 when Whitney performed during a TV special marking Michael Jackson's 30 years as a solo entertainer. 
That friend said, he was alarmed about how awful Whitney sounded and looked. He asked me whether I thought it was a good idea to reach out to her. He spoke for nearly a month of leaving Alejandra, who was his then wife, and getting back with Whitney because he said he knew she'd leave Bobby Brown for him. Of course, he didn't contact her, and that was the end of that, but he always carried a torch for her. Well, finally, in 2017, we get someone who knows Jermaine Jackson and who is willing to not be anonymous speak on this affair with Whitney Houston. Y'all know that we can always count on the sister LaToya Jackson to spill Jackson family tea. Are her words always true? Probably not. The jury is still out on that. But we know that she will flap those injection-filled lips to just about anyone who will listen. And in 2017, the co-host of The Talk felt like hearing her. And this is what she had to say about Jermaine and Whitney. She confirmed that Jermaine and Whitney were in a relationship. She said on The Talk, well, actually, to be quite honest with you, he did have a relationship. He has admitted that they, meaning Jermaine and Whitney, had an affair. LaToya went on to say, well, in 84, Jermaine and Whitney did work together. That was the beginning of her career. And on Jermaine denying the relationship with Whitney in his book, this is what LaToya said. I think that Jermaine wrote that in his book to protect Whitney at that particular time and he has admitted that they had an affair. So let's leave it at that, y'all. Let's give Hazel a rest. I know that she's tired, and let's go on and move on to wife number two. Surely by the second marriage, Jermaine had learned his lessons and decided to be faithful, right? Well, if that were true, there would probably only be 30 seconds left in this video, and you see that that's not the case, so let's move on. Alejandra Genevieve Oaziaza, this new wife of Jermaine's, who already had two children with Jermaine's younger brother, Randy. We have already explored this ridiculous relationship on this channel in depth in my video called Jermaine Jackson Married, Randy Jackson's Baby Mama, and Had Two Kids With Her. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. It's really good and it goes in depth about this marriage with Jermaine Jackson and Alejandra. Um, so I'm not going to go very, very in depth in, uh, in that relationship on this particular video, but long story short, by the time Jermaine met this unsuccessful gold digging stray, she had already had two kids with his brother. Jermaine knocked her up twice and married her, thus making his nephews, who were children of Randy and Alejandra, brother cousins to his own children with the same woman. That was really gross, Uncle Daddy Jermaine. By the time Jermaine was ready to divorce Alejandra, the two had had two sons together, Jafar Jackson, born in July of 96, and Your Majesty Jackson, born in October of 2000. And they had adopted a son who Joe Jackson gave them. His name is Dante Jackson. and He was born in 1992. Don't really know the story behind that. And as far as Jermaine's divorce was concerned, he wouldn't really need one because Alejandra was already married when she met and then married Jermaine. She was married to the man who she married in order to get her green card to live legally in the United States of America. Those two got fake married on March 18, 1995, a year after Jermaine left his recovering addict mistress, Margaret. They got their divorce, turned annulment in 2004. They, meaning Jermaine and Alejandra. When Jermaine filed and left the divorce papers at the house while he left the country. Just like left them on the kitchen table for her to find, y'all. So here are a couple of stories from Jackson family friend turned foe, Stacy Brown. He used to hang out a lot with Jermaine and here's one of his stories. In the mid 1990s, 
Jermaine met a young woman, one of his niece's friends. Her name was LaWanda Lane. Unfortunately, I could not find any photos of this woman and I searched. Apparently in 1999, Jermaine converted to Islam so that he could marry LaWanda. The year that he converted, he married LaWanda at a local mosque under his newly adopted Muslim name, Muhammad Abdul Aziz, which translates to, Oh Great Greasy One in Arabic. But wait, did I say that this happened in 1999? Because he was married to Alejandra, his brother's baby mama from 1995 to 2004. So yes, this wedding was a total farce to him, just as Alejandra's union with Jermaine was a farce to her because he knew that he was already married when he married Lawanda, just like Alejandra knew that she was already married when she married Jermaine. Regardless, Lawanda Lane was allegedly content with playing number two in Jermaine Jackson's life. But to Jermaine's credit, both he and Lawanda knew that this ceremony was not a legal one. But still, according to sources, she felt like she was his wife. Well, there's a story that says that while the family was checking out Michael Jackson at one of his 30 year anniversary concerts on this particular day, it was, it was also the anniversary of Jermaine and Lawanda. Jermaine had forgotten. He had both of his wives with him. And on this particular day, Lawanda was tired of being number two. So in front of Jermaine, Randy and Alejandra's children, she physically attacked Alejandra backstage at this Michael Jackson anniversary concert. Now, again, I don't have any pictures of her, but if you Google the name, you'll see she's listed in a lot of stuff regarding Jermaine Jackson. And uh, when Jermaine Jackson and the whole Jackson family was around Michael Jackson during his trial, she, LaWanda Lane, is listed as his assistant. And a lot of people who referenced LaWanda Lane as Jermaine's assistant put it in quotations. So there's something to this. Stacy's other story happens in 2003, when Jermaine was still married to Alejandra and LaWanda too, kind of. He says, quote, one summer night in 2003, he, meaning Jermaine, he and I were cruising Ventura Boulevard in Catherine's late model Mercedes. Why is this grown ass man driving his mother's car? Anyway, okay. We stopped at Starbucks in Sherman Oaks, where he introduced me to a neighbor named Sandy who was waiting for him. We got back into the car and Sandy followed in her Jeep close behind. Jermaine called Alejandra and told her that Minister Louis Farrakhan was in town and that we were going by his hotel to speak with him. We headed back into the pitch black darkness of the Sepulveda Pass where we parked and Sandy parked right behind us. Here, take the car and drive. Come back in like an hour or so, Jermaine said. He hopped out and into Sandy's car and before I could make a U-turn, they were like two teens ripping their clothes off and getting it on right there. When I picked Jermaine up, he insisted we try and see Farrakhan so that his alibi would work. An aide to Farrakhan said he wasn't available, so we returned to Havenhurst. Alejandra never asked about the meeting with Farrakhan. But wait, 2003? Jermaine was still married to Alejandra in 2003. Oh well, Jermaine finally, Jermaine and his Jerry Curl, went back to Starbucks a year after he left the divorce papers at the house for Alejandra and he met his final wife, or at least the final one that we know of so far. Her name was Halima Rashid. Jermaine said, I'd like a tall mocha latte and I'm not talking about anything on your menu, barista. And then he glanced back at her. No, okay, that only happened in my mind, but Somehow or another, he introduced himself to Halima and the rest was history. Halima, who comes from a wealthy Middle Eastern family and Jermaine Jackson got married in 2005, allegedly leaving his Muslim bride, Lawanda, complaining to Tito and Jackie Jackson that she still had to play number two. 
girl, why, whatever, let's move on. As far as I could tell, Luanda didn't handle playing number two to Halima as she had handled playing number two to Alejandra, meaning I can't find any instances of her putting her hands on Halima. But there was an incident that caused Halima to put her hands on Jermaine, well, her teeth actually. On November 28, 2015, Halima was arrested for having bitten Jermaine Jackson's leg. The charges were later dropped because it was difficult for investigators to know who was the aggressor in the domestic dispute. She filed for divorce about seven months later on June 21, 2016. After Halima divorced Jermaine, he started a relationship with Made Velasquez only a month after his divorce, but hey, he didn't cheat, so let's give it up for him. She is 40 years younger than Jermaine. She's referred to as a model, though I must say, I found no photos of her on runways in Paris, Milan, or New York, nor did I find any editorial print photos of her in Vogue, Elle, or W magazines. Perhaps she is a model of the Instagram variety. She was also on a season of El Gran Hermano, the Spanish version of Big Brother. The most recent story that I saw regarding this cluster of people, meaning Jermaine, Halima, and his new girlfriend, Mede, was from last year, 2019, when Jermaine claimed that his most recent ex-wife collected $93,000 from his music royalties that she had no rights to. In those court documents, he revealed that his monthly income was $14,000, which doesn't sound bad, but he also revealed that his monthly bills are a little over $11,000 and they include an $8,000 mortgage, $1,500 in child support, and $1,000 a month in clothing. I mean, hello, it must cost at least $1,000 a month to look as hot as Jermaine Jackson does, right? And on top of all those monthly bills, he's $29,000 behind in child support. And to top it all off, his new 24-year-old girlfriend does not contribute to his bills. So good luck with that, Jermaine. My goodness, that is it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. It took me a while to put all this information together, so I hope you liked it. Thank you so much for tuning into the Ty Said What Ty Said channel. Please leave a thumbs up and a comment down there so that we can get a discussion going and share this video on all of your social media. That really helps me a lot, especially when y'all share my videos on Facebook and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when my next video is ready for you. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.